Russian. Oh, good morning, everybody. <coughs> it's uh, eight o'clock, so we'll get started. Um, hope you're all well and healthy and appreciate you joining us from uh, around the world. Um, thank you for uh, coming to this webinar where we will talk about the plans um, in place at Bishop Stroh for reopening. Um, worth noting that Bishop Stroh, um, Bishop Stroh's term one does not start till September the 21st, so we've got a bit more time ahead of us from today in terms of our planning and organisation relative to most uh, boarding schools in the UK. Um, and obviously the plan today is to take you through um, the arrangements that are in place or have been put in place to ensure the safe return of our students uh, when they rejoin us on campus uh, on September the 21st. Just some introductions so that you know who from Bishop Stowe is um, with us today. So myself, uh, Mark Jeans, um, one of the directors, Sheryl Nicholson, principal, who I think many of you have um, seen present uh, webinars before or lead the discussion. Sarah Miles, our head of compliance and operations, has been working very closely with um, Stuart on the uh, plans for reopening um, and has been doing so over the last few months. And Tessa Howard Pies, our Director of Marketing and External Relations, who again, I think most of you um, know. The way that we want to um, sort of take you through today's discussion <coughs> is sort of using um, this sort of five step uh, framework. So a little bit of context about Bishop Row first uh, and our sort of situation, location. Um, then take you through what planning has been underway. So the steps that we've been taking um, uh, over the last few weeks and months, pretty much since lockdown. Um, the communications that we'll be sharing or have shared with parents um, before departure. Um, the arrangements that will be in place uh, at the start of term, not just on arrivals day, but for, during the first few weeks, um, uh, first few days and weeks of term. And finally, what the students should expect when they are back on campus and back in the regular routine um, of school. Uh, I've asked you just on the chat to um, make sure you're on mute during the presentation so there's no background noise. Um, once we finish the presentation, we will have time for Q&A um, and we'll use the chat function for Q&A. Uh, we've all got plenty of time to respond to questions. So um, if there's questions that you have as you go along, please pop them into the chat function and we will um, address them at the end. But I'll now hand over to Stuart to walk you through um, the discussion. Thank you, Mark. Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. It's lovely to see lots of students, parents, guardians and agents with us today. And we will go through and explain all the things that we have carefully planned to make sure that the return and the term is safe for all our students. I guess most of you will know that Bishop Stroh is in a nice rural location. As you can see from the map, we're down in the southwest corner of the UK. And actually, one of the things in the news this morning is that this is the region with the lowest instance in the UK of COVID. So we are in a particularly safe part of the country. And the location of Bishop Stroh College itself is particularly safe because we're surrounded by open countryside um, and we have a lovely rural setting. One of the other aspects of our context, which is really important, um, is that we are fully boarding. We have no day students and the significance of that will become apparent um, in the rest of these slides because it's one of the things that helps ensure that we're able to keep students particularly safe. Uh, next slide, please, Mark. Um, it's well known that Bishop Stowe places great emphasis on pastoral care. We look after our students very well indeed. And we've been doing that throughout the COVID crisis and right from the word go, we were not just making sure that we could care for their academic success um, as we moved to online, but we were making sure that we were caring for their welfare as well. And that is woven through everything that we do in the college. And this is recognized by the people who come and inspect Bishop Stroh College. Um, ISI came and saw us a couple of years ago and the last British Council um, inspection was in 2016 and that was one of the things that they emphasized and of course that's particularly important when we're facing the sort of situation that we are currently. Thank you Mark. So let's look at the things that have been taking place um, as we've been making the preparations. Um, we've been doing this, uh, Sarah and I in particular and many others, 
really since the lockdown began because we've been thinking about what do we have to do to make sure that when students do come back on campus in person that we're keeping them as safe as we possibly can. And you'll see from the bullet points that we adopted the Boarding Schools Association's charter for setting up a COVID safe operation and we've also committed to the UK's Safe Schools initiative. We've been making early arrangements for testing and there's a bit more on that later. We're doing all the things that I'm sure you'd be expecting us to do, making sure that before we start, we've done a, a very thorough deep clean of all the college buildings. And one of the things that we know uh, everybody values is um, getting plenty of information so that you understand what it is that we're doing and can see that we're preparing thoroughly. And we started that with the readiness for your opening brochure that was published in May. And we followed that up with further information in July. And of course, things like this that we're doing today and we'll continue to keep people um, fully up to date. Of course, the planning process that um, we started back at the end of March is very much a process. What we did in March, we've continually had to update because the regulations change, the situation changes and guidance changes. But we are taking advantage of, of getting really good guidance. We've been in touch with the local public health authorities um, again since back in March, so five months of ongoing contact with them. And we've also taken advantage um, of contacts I have in Cambridge who are actually um, running virology labs in Cambridge and we're able to ask them direct questions. So we're able to get information from the scientists themselves and check that the things that we're doing are uh, based on the best of evidence. Thanks, Mark. So we've been communicating a lot with people before departure, but let's have a look at that in a bit more detail. And we're making sure that everybody knows what is planned and um, in line with the BSA charter, we're making sure that each student and family knows what's happening and giving them the chance to ask any questions that they have and making sure that that information is clear. So as well as the opportunity to ask things verbally in person, making sure that that information is written down and clear for everybody. Obviously following the tier four sponsor requirements, we we'll make sure that um, students have what they need so that they can get safely through the um, arrivals process. And we know that you will need to have um, an emergency contact number just in case there is something that you're worried about, worried about, you think that something's changed, you think that there might be some delay, and we'll make sure that um, students and parents have uh, a number where they'll be able to get through to someone um, at all times of day and night um, so that that perhaps particularly nervous time of making the journey is somewhere where you know you've got really, really good help and guidance from us if you need it. And when um, students arrive, um, here's a little bit about what to expect. So um, students will be met at the airport and we'll make sure that you're being met by someone whose name you know, you're being met by who you expect and we'll make sure that they understand the correct protocols, whether that's in terms of social distancing or in terms of hygiene. Um, that's now becoming second nature for us in, in the UK, uh, as no doubt it is across the world. Now we're making arrangements for students to be tested during the first week. Um, I mentioned that we have direct contact with virology scientists. Their advice for us is that the best stage for doing that is towards the end of the first week and we already have that booked and ready to go. And we know that some students are going to have to be in quarantine for a period. So we have plans to look after students very carefully um, from when they arrive with us. They arrive in their taxi from the airport. We'll make sure that they're met in the car park by a, a member of staff who will look after them, guide them through the process, make sure that they're happy, feeling comfortable, feeling confident. And, and that type of closeness of care really based around the whole ethos of the college. 
will continue throughout the students time um, you know not just with us in quarantine but particularly when they're in quarantine because we know there'll be some um, stresses and concerns um, during that time. So the quarantine is taking place um, in our own student uh, residences with our own resident staff. There's a generous ratio of, of staff to look after them and we'll make sure that people um, don't feel um, lonely and isolated while they're in their quarantine. And part of that is that they're going to be in class. They're going to be having lessons with everybody else. So um, during the quarantine period, we will have the non-quarantine students in the classroom being taught by the teacher and the quarantine students will be with them in the virtual space. We are setting up classrooms in order to ensure that that combined teaching approach, that hybrid of students who are there virtually and students who are there physically um, works in the same effective way as we have been doing um, with the solely online provision at the moment. In terms of what happens when um, the quarantine students are, are not in class, well, the head of boarding and all our residential staff are making sure that there are activities so that these students are able to participate in, in happy, uh, engaging experiences in the same way as those who are not in quarantine are doing activities and, and enjoying life. And one of the advantages of our um, boarding context is that we're able to give uh, even our quarantine students plenty of time outside in the fresh air. So we're taking again the best of virology advice to make sure that we can do that in a COVID safe way and yet allow our quarantine students to get outside in the fresh air, have time with their friends in a safe, socially distanced, um, hygienic way, but making sure that their mental health and their well-being is as supported as their um, physical health. Thank you, Mark. So on an ongoing um, basis, give you some information about what we're doing. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning, we, we've got a really significant advantage at Bishop Stroh because we're fully boarding. When I've been having discussions with my virologist friends, um, they've been um, very clear that the fact that our students are all together living effectively as, as one household and not everybody disappearing out of school every day, coming back into school every day, and all students going off in all sorts of directions, as you'd expect in any school with, with day students, then um, once our students have been through quarantine, actually that should be almost as safe a uh, situation as it's possible to imagine. Um, because they are not going out and mixing with people who, who might be infected, they are only mixing with people who we know have not been infected, then it is a very safe household. Arguably, we could just treat them, um, the students then who are inside the college could just behave as, as though there is um, no need for any social distancing whatsoever but we're taking the opportunity to try and make things even that further level of COVID secure. And so we are doing some grouping of students into bubbles. So for example, the junior students might be held together in their classes, as you might imagine, and in their boarding and trying to limit as far as we can and as far as is sensible the overlap between younger students and older students and that means that uh, even within this super safe environment that we've got we're further um, following the principles that reduce the possibility of any transmission even though we think the likelihood of there being any infection coming into the college is extremely low and what we do recognize is that the people who are coming and going from the college each day are the teaching staff. So again, we've taken the best advice from um, our virology scientists about what we need to do to make sure that the teachers are as uh, low risk as possible in terms of any transmission. So the classrooms are uh, being designed and re, uh, rearranged so that the teachers can have that social distance. 
And even though the, the risk is, is very low, then we're doing everything that we can following the best of guidance to make sure that any risk we can um, you know, minimize and we, we are minimizing those risks. Next slide, please, Mark. So the social distance, we're going to um, try and keep that separation where we can by having staggered break times and meal times so that rather than bringing all students together all together in one group why they might all mix and that there would be risk of transmission where we where we can we're keeping some separateness um, between them our weekend activities are a very important feature of what we do um, at Bishop Strobe, uh, both in terms of the broader education and in terms of you know, simply having a lot of fun. And we're looking very carefully at those because we want to get um, as much of the enjoyment and learning that comes from our weekend activities as we always did. But we need to do that in a way which is uh, recognizing that we're in a different world and we need to make sure that we're not putting students at risk from the coronavirus by doing that. So a greater proportion of our activities are likely to be on site and a greater proportion are likely to be fairly local and wherever we go we'll be avoiding highly populated areas. What we understand again from the science and the public health advice is that we can take if we take students into the outdoors that's very low risk indeed and if we take them to places where they are essentially together just with Bishop Stroh students and we're in the outdoors then the risk is probably um, not really much higher than it is by, by staying in the college entirely. So we're managing these things in as safe a way as possible, but trying to give students the fun, the enjoyment, the learning that we know is, is really important to them. So with all of this, we're, as you can see, we're limiting the group sizes, which is a, an important factor in um, minimizing transmission risk and we're following all the guidance on how socializing can be done in in the safest and most sensible way and obviously and having said that we're taking great care about the staff who might be coming and going from the college then we're taking measures to restrict those who visit the college for whatever reason so careful arrangements about um, deliveries that are necessary into the college, careful arrangements about uh, visits from prospective parents, and being very careful about um, both the hygiene and the distancing to make sure that we're minimizing any transmission risk. Thank you, Mark. Um, wearing of masks is something that is becoming again routine in the UK, and everybody will be wearing uh, either masks or visors. Some of the latest information seems to be suggesting that visors are even better than masks and in a school setting, particularly where we've got students who are learning languages, obviously it helps if their mouth can be seen because it helps them understand what their teachers are saying and it helps their teachers guide them about their pronunciation. So we're looking at visors as well as masks or as an alternative to masks. And of course, we're following advice about hygiene in terms of hand washing and the provision of sanitizing gel around the college will ensure that students can be doing that um, as a matter of routine um, before classes, during classes, when they move from building to building and so on. And where there's guidance for using any greater um, level of protective equipment, then of course, we will follow that guidance as and when it comes out. I mentioned earlier that the, a deep clean is taking place before students come back and that cleanliness is going to be part of our continuing routine and what we're anticipating is that um, it is going to become part of habit for all of us um, whether it's the directors and the principal and the staff um, and, or, or, or students themselves that we're all going to be getting very used to the idea of being hygienic, wiping surfaces down uh, before and after we use them. And practical things like reducing the sharing of things um, so that every student has you know, their own pencil case not shared with everybody, anybody, that, um, 
things which used to be normal, like students asking to borrow the stapler. Well, that's something that we'll make arrangements to ensure that that sort of thing isn't necessary. So we're reducing the um, opportunities for things to be um, needed to be passed around and that might um, add to the transmission possibility. Uh, boarding has always been cleaned um, frequently and that will continue. Um, we'll be doing the cleaning at times when the students aren't there. So again, I'm um, trying to um, improve that social distancing. Mentioned already that the social distancing of the bubbling. Um, yeah, go forward again, Mark. Thank you, sorry. Uh, back one, I think I've missed one. We've done that one, haven't we? Done that one. Okay, yeah. Uh, we've been um, following the very best advice that we can get. As I said, not just taking that which is publicly available, but us going to people whom we know um, are the best people for advice about this, and so that we can make sure that it's both safe and that it's happy, supportive, and, and comfortable. We have an on site medical room and all boarding staff are trained in first aid to a high level, and they are familiar with looking after students' medical care day to day. Of course, if we have anything more serious or we suspect anything more serious, we have uh, access to the local medical practice, and they know the college very well. Um, we, we know some of them personally, and we um, are very used to um, seeking their help and advice. Um, on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, we've um, done very careful planning for what happens if we were to have a case or a sub suspected case. And we have um, already established areas in the college where if, um, if there is, well, firstly, if there is a symptomatic member of staff, a staff who feel, member of staff who feels they might be affected, well, obviously they would go home and they would stay at home. And we'd then be um, observing any students that they had been teaching very closely and, uh, and checking if there's any symptoms or concerns for them. Um, if it is a student, we have arrangements so that the student who we think might be infected um, can be isolated, that the um, students that they have been in touch with can also be isolated, and that all of those students can be taken very good care of. We have sufficient staffing to be able to move those students into a separate house with their own staff, looking after them very carefully, making sure that they're okay. If they turn out to be infected, to be looking after them through that quarantine situation, making sure that any medical needs are looked after, making sure that any well-being needs are looked after, and taking very careful care of them. Uh, next slide, please, Mark. Sorry. Hang on a minute. That's okay, Mark. There we go. I think it's just missed a slide, Mark. Um, yep, that's the one. Sorry. Um, as part of that, making sure um, that students and staff are okay and trying to get um, early warnings of anything. Um, as we mentioned, we're doing uh, an external um, COVID-19 test during the first week of term, and we will do additional tests um, as guidance becomes clear about what is the sensible way of approaching that. Um, staff too are going to be tested. And the advice we have from the virologists is that one of the most important things we can do is to establish a routine testing process with temperature and simply asking people how they are feeling. So that ongoing monitoring um, as, as a daily baseline um, so we get any sort of early warnings that might be there that somebody is perhaps um, becoming unwell. So. We've got um, a, a web of um, approaches to try and um, firstly ensure that the uh, infection can't come into the college. We've then got a web of things to try and monitor to see if it is 
um, entering the college. And then we've got a web of um, activities that then kick into operation to make sure that uh, any potentially affected students are very carefully looked after and that all the other students are again kept as safe as we possibly can. And when we look at the overall model that we have at, at, at Bishop Stroh, um, we have an organization that um, is completely self-contained. We are that boarding school model and that everybody within that grouping uh, we're testing at the beginning of the process to check that they are infection free. We have very few opportunities for the infection to come in from the outside and we're managing that very carefully indeed to try and minimize that. But we recognize that the potential is still there and we've taken great steps to plan to keep people um, safe and cared for if it should happen, even though we've done everything we can to make it as unlikely as, as is almost imaginable. So we're doing everything we can and we think that we're very well prepared. I hope that's helpful and we're very happy to take any questions that anybody might have. Thanks, Mark. Thank you, Stuart. As Stuart said, hopefully that was helpful. Um, and um, we will be showing the materials after today's uh, webinar, along with a video, uh, access to a video. The video will be put onto our YouTube channel. Um, as I mentioned up front, if you've got questions that you'd like to put to Stuart or to Sarah or to Tessa now, um, please do so using the chat function. Um, I will read out the question and we'll uh, respond as best we can. Any questions from anybody? Is it all straightforward? Well, I will ask a question, Stuart, because um, I know it uh, is on some people's minds, and I know we've discussed it a little bit. Um, what would be our position in the event of a, uh, a second wave in the UK and um, resulting lockdown? Um, well, we're very well positioned for that. Again, because we are so self-contained, um, our students are already with us. Um, our staff, we, this is something that we um, were even looking at back in March. And we had a number of staff who said at that stage, if it were necessary to um, completely isolate the college, there are a number of staff who said that they would join the college in isolation. So they'd come in and be part of the college household. And so we know we've got a number of staff who would come in and join us and do their teaching and live within the college for a period if that were necessary. Of course, since then, we've also got masses of experience in terms of online teaching. And we know that we um, then could have teachers who are at home offsite, who are, instead of sending their lessons out to students around the world, would be sending their lessons in to students within the college. And we have planned for a situation where um, that might be necessary. And we know we have enough resident staff who would be inside um, a lockdown college who would be able to provide the support and supervision so that the students who are still in class could be getting their lessons from their teacher even if the teacher was outside class, but the students would be with a member of staff in the classroom with a member of staff there able to support them and guide them and make sure that it was all running smoothly. Thank you. Um, next question, are you following, good morning, are you following government guidelines for which students need to quarantine, i.e. which country they reside in? I think I can answer that one. The answer is yes, we are very much observing the guidelines in terms of um, the countries that the students are arriving from. So. Uh, we monitor that on a week by week basis. Sarah uh, is overseeing that uh, for us so we know at any one time how many students um, will be quarantined versus how many will be able to uh, be treated as non quarantined students. And of course, that is changing uh, day by day, week by week as the government updates its um, guidelines. And I think it's probably helpful to add to that we're, we're managing the process of arrival for quarantine and non quarantine students. 
So um, we're running a timed system of arrival so that we can look after an individual student who uh, needs to go into quarantine. They will be coming and they will be coming in a, in a, in a separate time period so we can look after them carefully make sure they're in their room being looked after and cared for and then the next one arrives and that process is being done separately from those who are non-quarantine because obviously non-quarantine students their arrival process will be slightly different and they can join students in a different way so we've looked at all the details about how those separate things might be best planned Thank you. Uh, next question from Dawn. Good morning, Dawn. Um, will the school stay open for Christmas holidays for students that can't go home? Now, I think probably our official line on that one is we haven't made a, a formal decision, but it's quite likely, Dawn, that we will end up staying open over the Christmas holidays. Um, certainly, we're intending to do so at Padworth, um, Bishop Stroh's sister school. Uh, and I know, Stuart, you've already sort of raised that internally as something that we need to think about. So probably, Dawn, probably the answer is probably yes, but we haven't sort of made a final decision on that, but I imagine that will be, will be the case. Uh, next question, can guardians bring quarantined students or quarantining students back to school or will it have to be a taxi? I think that's something where we will need to follow the best guidance. We are awaiting some guidance from the Department for Education um, about uh, specifically designed for, for boarding schools. So they may uh, have some guidance about that. Um, obviously, it will be based around what is seen as the um, you know, way of minimizing, minimizing risk. M my own guess at the moment is that you know, if, if guardians are able to bring students back, we would be happy with that, provided guardians and parents are happy with that. Okay. Um, what protocols will we need to observe if we wanted to visit um, my niece? So um, this is from Aya, I would like to come and visit her niece who's at the college. What would be the protocols that she would need to observe? Um, well, I think as, as a starting point, we would say we'd want to um, limit visitors as far as we can um, but of course people will still want to come and visit their their, uh, their family and we understand the um, processes for minimizing risk um, it's about making sure that the people who come to visit can say we uh, believe that we haven't been in contact with anybody who's been infectious we have done the following things in in order to um, make that um, visit as hygienic as possible. We will be asking people to um, have a, a temperature check on arrival. We'll be asking them to make sure that they um, are hand washing or um, using sanitizer. We'll be um, keeping that visiting group separate from, from the other students. So uh, we're, we're not in a, a lockdown scenario where no one is meeting anybody but we are in a scenario where we're trying to minimize um, the risk of, of, those, of those meetings. Okay, um, thank you. Um, next question about arrivals day. With flights arriving at different times, how is the arrival process going to be managed? Well, this is where we're going to need um, understanding and help from everybody who is arriving. As I mentioned a few minutes ago, we are, um, looking at um, setting times when we're going to ask people to arrive you know it might say please arrive if you can at 10 20 you know or we'll be talking to you about when what's your what's your flight time can you arrive in such and such a time so that we aren't faced by lots of people all arriving at once because obviously that would create the group gathering that we know is risky so we're trying to um, do things in a particularly carefully managed way so um, it is, I think the important um, word is the one that's in the question there, that it is going to be managed rather than just say, you know, arrive at some time on day one. Um, and that is then going to give um, us time to look after you as an individual in the right way, because looking after every individual in the right way is really the key to looking after the group in the right way. Okay, um, is there a pickup of students from the airport and how much would it cost? 
Is that one for Sarah or is that one for Stuart? Um, I know the answer is, is yes, but I don't know <laughs> beyond that. Sarah, do you know off the top of your head the, the typical cost for the airport transfers? Uh, well, obviously, it depends on which airport you're travelling from. Heathrow is, off the top of my head, about £170, I think. Right, so we use a company called um, Prestige Cars. We've been using them at Bishop's Joe for many, many years. Uh, all of the drivers are BBS checked uh, as, as they need to be, and they will be following the protocols that we outlined in the presentation about um, social distancing um, and, and the like. Um, I think they're not charging any extra, so it's just a standard charge for um, a pickup from the airport. We have to be careful, obviously, because in the past we might have been able to have more than one student being uh, uh, in taxi coming from the airport. Um, if we've got students arriving from different countries, they obviously need to be uh, quarantined if they are um, coming from a country that uh, is a quarantine country. So we can we have to manage that more carefully. Um, next question, should we pack um, visors and or masks in personal luggage? Um, I think my advice would be yes, because the students will need to get access to those quickly when they arrive, um, because they might be in a situation where they need to wear a mask. Anyone have any further questions? No? Um, well, we're all here to answer any questions that you might have after this morning. Um, hopefully this has been a helpful discussion and hopefully um, you feel a bit more assured about the arrangements that we're putting in place. This is obviously um, a huge undertaking uh, for all schools in the UK in terms of making sure the return of international students is safe. Um, but um, we're confident that the measures we're putting in place will ensure that um, you can look at that with, um, with, with confidence. Um, another just quick suggestion come in, you might want to remind everyone that they need to fill out um, government form online before departing their country. Thank you, Dawn, for that. Um, and another question come in, sorry, contact sports. My daughter is looking forward to these. Uh, probably the question is, will they be able to do contact sports? Um, Sure, is that one for you? Uh, yes, we're taking advice on that. Um, there um, has been some advice from the national sporting governing bodies about um, the approach to contact sports. Um, obviously, again, because Bishop Stroh has all its students effectively in the one household, then the um, answer probably is yes, that we could but um, it's actually a question um, that I have asked to my virology friends in Cambridge. Um, I haven't had an answer from them yet, but I have actually asked them specifically, um, given our context, is this something that it would be um, really low risk for us to do and would mean that there are um, things that we can do with students in a much um, safer way than perhaps many other organizations could. Um, I know clearly it's far lower risk for us where we're in a grouping with students who are all together and effectively um, isolated together from the rest of the world than it would be if they were all day students coming in from different households and families and villages and towns um, all across a region. So once again, the Bishop Stroh um, boarding model is a, a massive advantage for us in terms of what we can do safely. Good. Does anyone have any final questions at this stage? No? In which case we'll say um, thank you for joining us. It's been about 40 minutes than we uh, anticipated. appreciate you sparing the time. Hopefully it's been helpful. Um, please do get in touch if there are any other questions with um, any of us here from Bishop Joe by email or um, obviously give us a call. And we obviously look forward to welcoming um, your son, daughter, uh, students um, back at college um, in September. So thank you very much and have a good rest of the day. Yeah, thank you, everybody. We're really excited about seeing everybody back in person on the 21st of September. We're looking forward to it very much. Thank you. Thank you.